Chanukah Sameach from Ramot Bet. Let's try to learn together a practical teaching for how to take Chanukah into our lives and to uplift them and to illuminate them with the candles of Chanukah. I once heard a teaching from Yeshua Hartman, who was one of the experts on the Maharal of our generation. He was explaining an enigmatic teaching of the Maharal. The Maharal explained that when the Yavanim came to attack the Heichal, the place of the menorah, they are metame all of the oils within the Heichal because Yavan has the numerical value of 66, while Heichal has the numerical value of 65. They saw in this the ability to overwhelm and overcome the Heichal, which had one less in the numerical value structure than they did. The Maharal writes that even though the Yavanim were trying to overwhelm the Heichal, there's a place that only the Kohen Gadol is allowed to go into called the Kodesh Kedashim. And because the Kodesh Kedashim is a place connected to Kohanim, they didn't realize that despite being 66, one more than Heichal, the Kohen, which is 75, would be able to overwhelm them. What are we supposed to make of all this? 75 beats 66, 66 beats 65. It seems like a strange numbers game. Rav Harman explained that the role of the Kohen in Jewish life is to be an intermediary between God and the Jewish people, Hashem and Am Yisrael. The Kohen on the one hand is referred to in the Gemara as Shlucha de Rachmana. He is the messenger of Hashem. When we bring a Karban, Hashem doesn't eat the meat of the Karban. The Kohen eats the meat of the Karban as a stand-in for Hashem. He's the agent of Hashem as the Shlucha de Rachmana. At the same time, the Kohen is called Shlucha Didan. He's the Shliach of the, of the Jewish people, in the sense that we can't bring the Karban ourselves. The Kohen acts as the intermediary between us and Hashem. Similarly, the Maharal writes in a number of places that as we know a Kohen is born a Kohen. His father gives birth to him. He is automatically a Kohen. Not so by a king, who just because his father is the king does not mean he's automatically the king. There could be another brother or another cousin who is more worthy. And certainly a Talmud Chacham, just because a person has a father who is very wise, does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that they are going to be a Talmud Chacham. A Kohen, on the other hand, is born a Kohen, which means that his kahuna is related to his guf, to his body. That, of course, relates to the fact that the Kohen is the shliach of human beings, of the Jewish people. At the same time, the Kohen, of course, is a person who enters into places where other people aren't allowed to go in, which represents the fact that he is not just a body, but in fact, the Kohen isn't even allowed to be tame, he's not allowed to become impure by coming into contact with a dead body that doesn't have a soul attached to it because the Kohen is so connected to the idea of the soul. So which is it? Is the Kohen Hashem's shliach or is he our shliach? Is the Kohen a body or is he a soul? In Jewish numerology, the Maharal explains that the number seven always means perfection of this world, whereas the number eight, which is a very Hanukkah number, relates to beyond this world, that which goes beyond the world. In fact, Rav Hutner once explained that the number seven comes from the language of the word sheva, which means soveya, which means satisfied, fullness, as opposed to eight, which comes from the word shmeina, shmona comes from the word shmeina, which means overwhelming, like to be, go beyond the borders of, satisf of satisfaction and to break past regular eating. Shmeina. Seven means perfection, whereas eight means going beyond perfection, beyond this world. Beyond the perfection of this world lies the perfection of the world to come. Eight, which means l'malam in hateva. When a Jew gets a bris on the eighth day, they're going beyond their physical domain and entering into a spiritual domain, which is the world of eight. Because in Judaism we don't have, there's no such thing as a decimal point of 7.5, which is the perfect link between 7 and 8. The closest thing we have to that is 75, which is between 70 and 80, representing being in this world, but being also beyond the world. The Kohen, whose numerical value is 75, is able to overwhelm Yavan, whose entire essence is to be attached to the body without attaching it to something which is beyond. This is what the Maharal meant when he said, that the Yavanim, thinking they could overwhelm the holiness of the Beis HaMikdash because raw guf versus raw spirituality in this world, the body is going to win. 
But the Jewish people, who are called the Mamleches Kohanim, who are priests, who are Kohanim, are able to tap into the realm of 75, which means to connect spirituality to physicality, which overwhelms and defeats raw physicality in its pure form. When physicality and spirituality unite, which is the secret of Hanukkah, when the candle, when the fire, which is something which seems beyond this world, something which doesn't seem to be of our domain, it seems like this ethereal substance, fire, gets lit in our, in our homes, it inspires us, it gives us a window into the world of 7.5, which is the perfect meeting place between this world and the world to come. For this reason, just to conclude, when Avram Avinu started his journey to Eretz Yisrael, the Torah makes mention of the fact that when Avram left Haran and traveled to the land of Israel, it was in the land of Israel that Avram Avinu reached the age of 75. Why does the Torah tell us that Avram reached the age of 75 as he was going to Eretz Yisrael? In light of what we said, I think it's pretty obvious that Avram Avinu entering to Eretz Yisrael began the long journey of the Jewish people's re-entry into Eretz Yisrael, which is the place where a Jewish person finds spirituality in the physical. It's the place where our homes and our dining room tables and the swamp lands which are drained and the yeshivas which are built on mountains which need to be raised and streets which need to be paved all take on a spiritual domain where seven and eight meet together in the, in the realm of 75. Avram was described as the one who unites God not only as Hashem up there in the sky but down here physically in this world. This is the message of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the ability to take physicality and raise it to its spiritual potential. Hashem should help us that we should all be zocheh to include ourselves in this miraculous people, the Mamleches Kohanim Vegai Kadosh, to be a holy people and to be a priestly people, to teach the world what it means to connect physicality to spirituality and spirituality to physicality. Physicality and that merit will be zocheh that the lighting of the candles in our homes will illuminate not only our lives but will be, will be able to be an or lagayim, a light unto all of the nations. And will be zocheh to see the Gula Shleim of Amites. Amen.